here we will continue our discussion of what influences genetic diversity, focusing on bottlenecks. So a population bottleneck, I'm not going to go into large detail in terms of defining it because I think you've probably heard about it in other classes, but overall the effect of a bottleneck is to reduce effective population size and also genetic diversity. So in this image here, we have some kind of population that for whatever reason has a chokehold in terms of only a few individuals are able to survive. If only those green individuals survive, we've not only reduced the overall effective population size, but also the genetic diversity. Now we've lost that blue allele. And similar to what we just talked about with the temporal method for estimating effective population size, Comparing samples from two different time points can be really useful in determining whether a past bottleneck has occurred. So that's one way we can use genetic data to actually identify a past bottleneck. This is something they indeed did in that study that I referenced in the previous video with our cheeky Seychelles warbler friends. They compared historical and present samples and indeed found that there were large changes throughout time in terms of a reduction in effective population size and reduction in genetic diversity, and they can trace that to a population bottleneck that happened in the 60s. One particular type of bottleneck is a founder effect, and that happens when a species is introduced into a new area that it did not previously occupy, so they're founders of that population, right? And the reason why this is a bottleneck is because if you only have a few individuals going to this new site, starting this new population, you're essentially starting that new population with whatever genes those few individuals happen to have. So this often occurs in instances where you have individuals colonizing islands, for instance. The two examples that I have shown here, one on the left is Darwin's finches. That's one example of a founder effect where these birds colonize different islands. Another example on the right is the lemurs that are found in now only in Madagascar. Originally, they think they rafted over from the mainland, and so there was a founder effect in the sense that the individuals that made it to Madagascar whatever genes they had, those are the ones that founded the new population. Also, this lemur is super jazzed about whatever it's eating. I don't know what it's eating, but I hope to be that happy throughout the rest of my day. Another example or specific type of species that experiences founder effects and bottlenecks are invasive species. So again, it's the same sort of idea, but if you have an invasive species, they're colonizing this new habitat. Only a few individuals are going to be starting that new population. So again, another example of an invasive species is this sargassum that I talked about that's common in the Caribbean and many other places right now as well. And in that paper that I cited, they actually did find that there's low genetic diversity in that species, possibly because the original founder individuals had low genetic diversity, and that has just continued throughout time thus far. And lastly, just to differentiate a bottleneck from a continuous ongoing decline. In the scenario that's shown at the top in a population bottleneck, we have some kind of temporary reduction. So that's the difference here. Bottlenecks are temporary. So again, if we use that lemur Madagascar example, there was a temporary reduction in population size and some loss of genetic diversity, but through time as the individuals on Madagascar were able to thrive and produce large populations, we now again see that return to a large population size with a lot of genetic diversity. In contrast, the scenario two on the bottom, which is population decline, is just a continuous decrease in both the population and its genetic diversity. This has been found in many types of fish species, for instance. This is the citation shown here. This image is an Atlantic sea bream, which was a highly, is a highly fished, overfished species. 
And so in these types of situations, what you see is it's not temporary. So there's no recovery like we saw with the lemurs, but through time, we're seeing this continuous decrease in genetic diversity. So here, see, we didn't have any recovery. We still have, we right now have fixation of this particular allele. So overall, populations that are experiencing these ongoing declines are actually a really big cause for concern because, well, they're, first of all, you're losing genetic diversity, which isn't easy to replace. <clears throat> Excuse me. And also, because these populations are now small, they're also going to be even more affected by drift. So it's kind of this positive feedback loop where we're having this spiral of more and more negative effects for these species.